Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on more awesome content. Oh my god, there were freaking Mandos in this episode. Holy shit. Alright guys, hold on because this episode had a lot of stuff to recap. And pretty much almost the same as review. So, we're going to start off with the recap as always and then move on to the review. So the episode starts off with Sabine and Fen Rao from Concord Dawn playing a Mandalorian version of some chess type game. And naturally she tries to get him to join the Rebellion and he tries to get her to go back to be loyal to Mandalore. So... Ezra, Sabine, and Chopper are sent to investigate that something's wrong with the safe passage from Concord Dawn back from a previous episode in Season 2, where Fen Rao is from and his group of Mandalorian protectors. Something is wrong with the passageway to Con through Concord Dawn. So of course, when they get to Concord Dawn in its blown up state, Ezra gets distracted like the little kid he is, and they get knocked out by Fen Rao and their weapons stolen. So when they awake, Fen Rao is standing over a cliff looking up at his village of protectors and he realizes they've been ambushed or slaughtered. He thinks it's a rival clan who did it, but of course it's not. It's the Empire, so Sabine says it's not likely that it's a rival clan for various reasons. And a Viper probe droid pops up and tra starts transmitting their location. They destroy it and then all of a sudden they see Imperial Mandos, baby, flying in, a whole squad of them, and... Ezra takes their attention away while Fen Rao and Sabine escape and come up with a strategy to rescue Ezra, more on Sabine's part. Fen Rao has no interest in rescuing Ezra, just escaping, viewing his sacrifice as a pawn. But of course Sabine wants to rescue Ezra because then there'd be no sub Ezra, right? So while Ezra is captured, he's interrogated by Gar Saxon, the Imperial Viceroy of Mandalore. Such an official sounding name right there. And Ezra comes up with various lies, excuses, blah, 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 while buying Sabine and them time to rescue him, which seems to him like it would never freaking come. Now, Fen also tells Sabine that Saxon is part of House Vizsla, or Clan Vizsla, but it's supposed to be House Vizsla, um, who, if you remember from the Clone Wars, was the Mandalorian leader pre-Vizsla from the Death Watch. So Sabine now knows that Saxon is the part of that same house. And after a little bit, Sabine finally manages to rescue Ezra, although Fen leaves with their ship, leaving them kind of stranded and surrounded by Mandos. Saxon tells him that he'll spare Sabine if she vows her allegiance to Mandalore and to him and to the Empire, basically. Sabine fakes it while telling Chopper to get ready to basically put a sound frequency through their helmets to allow them to escape. So she fakes it and that's what happens. She and Ezra fly off with the jetpack that she stole from one of the Mandos when they were thinning out the herd. Obviously Saxon and them recover and follow. Now while Saxon was trying to get Sabine to surrender he hinted about her, her mother joining Saxon's uh, Imperial Mando Super Commandos. The small hint, and I think we'll get into that later. That might be the discussion video for this week. Although, like I said, it was just a hint, so it's not too much to go off of. But that's there. Anyway, so they give chase, and Sabine loves her new jetpack. Uh, while she carries Ezra, while he deflects uh, blaster fire from the Mandos, and they slowly take them out one at a time throughout the whole thing. Finally, it gets down to just two of them, Saxon and one of his commandos. But they can't seem to take them down because one of the commandos had went to cut them off. And they both crash land on the ground when they were heading towards the Mandalorian ship they were going to use to escape. Luckily for them, Fen Rao comes back to save their life before they're both executed. So Ezra makes it onto the ship, the, that, uh, the new phantom that Fen Rao's on, and... Um, Saxon grabs Sabine before she could escape and they have a little family fight which seems to be at like a standstill although it's weird to me how Sabine can take on the Imperial Viceroy of Mandalore who's in charge way older more experienced and she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for sure um, Anyway, the battle ends with her destroying his jetpack, and she goes to fly off to the ship. And before she could get there, he blasts her backpack, leaving her back to normal Sabine, no jetpack. Oh, that jetpack would have been a really nice addition to her. Um, but she still makes it on the ship, of course. It 
it always ends like that. She makes it on the ship, and they get away, leaving Saxon down there alive still. So he'll probably make another appearance. Um, Fenral says he'll join the, their rebellion, and he respects that. Sabine still kept some of her Mandalorian ties when she protects others that aren't even Mandalorian. Now for my review portion. So, um, before I saw the episode, I saw a lot of reviews that were saying, you know, same old, same old, a happy ending, conflict, blah, 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 Rebels isn't dark enough and stuff like that. So, I don't know if I was just had low expectations for this episode going in or what, but I actually enjoyed the episode a lot. It was freaking, it was intense. Some of the action scenes in there were really, really, really well done. Uh, they kept me really attentive. It wasn't like boring or slow paced or anything. It, it was a lot faster paced than the normal action scenes that Rebels usually has. So I was impressed by this episode as far as the action goes. Um, as far as plot wise, I guess it's still a filler for the most part. Um, the only part that's not a filler, I guess the only new information that is not really a filler would be Sabine's mother's hint. Like her, the hint at Sabine's mom, and the fact that Fen Rao joined the rebellion. So hopefully he'll appear in a later episode. I feel like they're just gathering all these people up, um, just like to join the rebellion. Like wedge, all these people are joining the rebellion. I feel like they're gonna come back like the freaking Avengers: Infinity War. They're all gonna come back on one finale episode with one big battle. Empire versus all these new rebels. I feel like they're just setting up for that or something because they they keep recruiting these people and they don't show up. But it, you get the feeling that they're going to come back at some point. So I feel like that's... But no, the episode was... I enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't too many hints at Mandalorian's, like, culture, backstory, any of that. It wasn't a lot of, like, Mandalorian information. More such as just uh, highlighting Mandalorian personalities, uh, traits, like the honor part. getting Talking about Sabine and her honor or her being a real Mandalorian and stuff like that. So it it wasn't too much like for oh uh, Mandalorian fans there wasn't too too much lore uh, to go along with this episode but like I said I think the highlight of this episode was definitely the action scenes the action scenes were intense they were they were pretty good for Rebels um, uh, as far as Sebezra goes it didn't really highlight too much of Sebezra or Ezra Bean as I like to call it. But it didn't really highlight too much of that for the most part. Yeah, it didn't really show too much actual romance. Um, but next episode we'll get more Ezra and Sabine. So maybe that one will maybe that one will push forward the Sebezra fans. Um, but yeah, so my review I gave it like a seven out of ten. It was decent. I wish there was a little bit more Mandalorian lore in there, um, stuff like that. I wish there was a little more information wise, but. The action definitely blew my mind because I'm not used to this from Rebels, like the amount of action that was in there. So that, that was awesome. But uh, check out my other videos right here on the screen and I'll see you guys later.